morning and welcome to La Morada Foursquare Church. And we would like you to join us this morning in lifting up your hands and worshiping God and maybe doing a little jumping, hallelujah, a little shouting to the Lord this morning because he's worthy to be praised. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. Oh, how great thou art, Lord Jesus. How great thou art, Lord. We lift up your name on high, Lord God. We lift up our voices to you, Lord Jesus, that there would be a sweet aroma unto your nostrils, Heavenly Father. Be blessed this morning, Lord God, as we worship you, Lord Jesus. Thank you again for this day that you have made. Yes, we will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord God, and praise you, Lord. Father God, be with the ones that are sick, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we ask that you touch them, dear Heavenly Father God. Make them whole, Lord Jesus. You touched me, Lord God. I know you can touch others, dear Heavenly Father, in, in Facebook, Lord God, YouTube, Lord God, here in our church. You can touch them, Lord God. You're a God of healing, Lord Jesus trust in you, Lord God, so we can enjoy you this morning, Lord God. Again, you are welcome to this place. Lord, be with our pastor as he brings forth the message. Anoint him, dear Heavenly Father God. Father God, be with our, our worship team. Anoint the worship team, Lord God. Bless them, dear Heavenly Father God, as they bring forth the music, Lord. Again, we thank you for this day that you made. Father God, be with us as we glorify you. Jesus Christ, everyone said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
us afresh today, God. Renew us, refresh us, fill us, God, to be more like you.
to gather in your name today, Lord God. Yes, Jesus. I just thank you, Lord God, for all of the love, all of the blessings. And even in the storms, even in the hard storms that come into our lives, Lord God, you are faithful, Lord God. You yes. are faithful. Yes. I just want to invite you, brothers and sisters, this morning to just Worship, worship, worship him. Yes. Praise him even in the storm. Fight your battles with the word of God. Yes. The Bible, the Bible just guides us and leads us to what we need to do in our trials and tribulations. 
I am a testimony. I am a testimony how God saved me. Yes, amen. And I am here today to just praise his name and continue to fight with the word of God, continue to fight my battles. And Jesus really, truly saves, really, truly saves from abuse, from mental, emotional, destructive, corruptive world that we live in right now. Just trust in him. Trust in him. Yes, amen, amen. He saved me from a very, very long battle. Very, very long battle. He saved me and I'm here to praise him. Amen. I'm here to worship him. Amen. I'm here to continue to fight my battles. He has the power to fight, and we have to trust in him that he will fight our battles, but we need to surrender. We need to surrender our lives to him, and I just encourage you to surrender your life every single day, every single day, and renew your mind with the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. I just feel the Holy Spirit in here. I feel the Holy Spirit in here surrounding us right now in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. He is just renewing our minds, renewing, renewing our minds, renewing our bodies. And I just feel healing, healing. If you need healing today, I feel that the Lord is coming. He is coming and he is healing you amen. in your mind, in your spirit, in your heart. He is healing. Thank you, Jesus. Worship with me, please. Bye. 
victory with the praise on my lips oh I see the victory with the praise on my lips yes I see the victory with the praise on my lips oh I see the victory with the praise on my lips oh I see the victory yeah. with the praise on my lips I see the victory with the praise on my lips. Oh, I see the victory yeah, with the praise on my lips. Yeah, I see the victory with the praise on my lips. Oh, I see the victory with the praise on my lips. Oh, I see the victory with the praise on my lips. See a victory with the praise on my lips. I fight my battles with the praise on my lips. Oh, I fight my battles with the praise on my lips. Yes, I fight my battles with the praise on my lips. Oh, I fight my battles with the praise on my lips. I fight my battles with the praise on my lips. And I fight my battles with the praise on my lips. Oh, I fight my battles with the praise on my lips. And I fight my battles, victory. Oh, with the praise on my lips. I see a victory with the praise on my lips. I see the victory with the praise on my lips. I see the victory. us 
to everlasting love, everlasting peace, everlasting victory. Only the victory that comes from you, God. How great and wonderful you are to us. How merciful and kind you are to us. That you are here, that you inhabit our praises. And you meet us here and you provide the victory for us in our lives. We thank you, God. We love you. We give you all of the praise, all of the honor, all of the glory to you alone. In the mighty, holy, majesty name of Jesus, we pray. Father, we just thank you. You are truly good to us, merciful and kind, worthy to receive glory and honor and power. We thank you for your spirit that is here, that you're moving in our hearts, that you, Father, continue to be at work in us, and that you go before us, and when you go before us, Victory is assured. We thank you that you do go before us. That, Father, it is not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. Father, because you are the Lord of battle. For the battle is not ours, but the battle is yours. And because the battle is yours, the battle is won. 
And so we thank you that you are doing a work in us, shaping us and molding us, that we might honor you in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, we're going to dismiss the children, but before we dismiss the children, we want to pronounce a blessing over them. Somebody asked, maybe I ought to bless the children. That's all right. So we're just going to pray a blessing over these kids right over here. Amen. Actually, why don't you just come on up? Come on up. Come on up. Yeah, come on up, girls. Come on. We're going to pray for you. Amen. Amen. Let's bless. Oh, I like that. They're all, don't aren't they some beautiful children here? Amen. Father, we thank you for these children who you have blessed us with. We ask, Father, that they are your workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good work that your spirit is upon them to do your will and that they love you with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind, and all their strength. And that, Father, as they go to learn more about you, that they, that, that which they learn, they will make a part of their lives, that your light might shine through them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, as always, I thank the Lord for the privilege and opportunity just to be able to share the word of God. It is by his hand and his hand alone that I, I get this privilege to share his sacred word. And I am so thankful. And I always read out of 1 Peter 4.11. It says, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. And if anyone Serves, let him serve by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now what we're doing, this is like our, our third in the series about being anointed. You know, we hear the term. And to be anointed literally means that you, it means to smear with oil, to consecrate. And to consecrate means to dedicate, to set aside for a sacred purpose. Now, last week we said we, we're anointed to live holy. This is what we're set aside to do, to live a life that honors God. This week we're anointed to say, serve, that, we, that God has set us aside to serve him. So when a person was anointed, if you had the kings or the priests, or the prophets, they would be anointed with oil, and that means they were set aside for a specific purpose. So we are anointed by the Holy Spirit. In other words, the oil is, is symbolic of the Spirit, and we've been anointed to live a life of service that honors God. Second Peter uh, 1 and 9 says this, and if you have your notes, it's right there, and I have those notes for you so you can underline write in them, add to it, maybe even cross out a few you don't like, but they're there for you to, to that you might read a, and learn from. And in 1 Peter, no, 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1, starting with verse 9. And it says, for he delivered us and saved us and called us with a holy calling. Whoop, you have a wrong one? Oh, oh, but it's supposed to be Second Peter. Oh, okay. It is. All right then, just read what I have. <laughs> All right. All right. So what it says, it says, and He delivered us, and saved us, and called us with a holy calling, a calling that leads to a consecrated life, a life set apart a life of purpose, not because of our works or because of any personal merit. We could do nothing to earn this, but because of his own purpose and grace, his amazing undeserved favor, which he granted to us in Christ Jesus before the world began eternal ages. And what we've been doing, our, our, our saying has been this, and I want you to repeat after me. I am anointed, I am anointed 
I am called. I am gifted for his purpose. Amen. Remember, you're anointed, you're called, and gifted. Now, Messiah means the anointed one. So we've been anointed by the anointed one for a purpose. We've been anointed by Jesus with the Holy Spirit, and we've been set aside for a specific purpose by God. And part of that purpose is to serve. Hope I got this one right. Galatians chapter 3, starting with verse 26, and this is out of the Amplified. Now, for you who are born again and have been reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, sanctified, and are all children of God, and look at what it says, and set apart for his purpose. Once again, let me read that again. Set aside, apart for his purpose with full rights and privileges through faith in Jesus Christ. For all of you who were baptized into Christ, into, one, into spiritual union with the Christ, the anointed have clothed yourself with Christ. And look at what it says. That is, you have taken on his characteristics and his values. So, I, so I, I, I'd say this, that we've been anointed to serve, We've been called to serve, and we've been gifted to serve. Why, 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 why would you say that? Well, I want to read what the anointed one says. I want to read what Jesus says about service. Mark chapter 10, starting with verse 42. Out again, out of the Amplified. Calling them, his disciples, to himself, Jesus said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers of the Gentiles, lord over them. And their, par and their powerful men exercise authority over them, tyrannizing them. But this is not how it is to be among you. Instead, whoever wishes to be great among you must be your what? Servant. And whoever wishes to be first and most important among you, you must be a slave to some. You must be a slave to all. Here it is. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. So the anointed one has been what? Anointed to serve. This is what he's been called to do. And to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, what does it mean to ransom? There is, there's, there's three parts to it that, I, that I've been researching. Ransom means to loosen, to set free. It means we've been redeemed, but it was with a price. Now, it carries with it that Christ was a sin offering. In other words, he who knew no sin offered himself for us that we might be forgiven of our sins. So Christ is offered a part of that, that ransom is that he was an, a sin offering. Again, he who knew no sin was offered up on our behalf that we might be forgiven of our sins. That's part of be, being ransomed. It also carries with it reconciliation, that we are not only forgiven, but we've been reconciled. And what does that mean? Is that we are now in relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ. That is our right. That is our privilege. Not that anything that we've earned in and of ourselves, but it's because of his grace and mercy that he says, all right, then not only are you forgiven, but now you've been reconciled to the Father. Now you have a relationship with him. Do you know that you can forgive somebody at a distance? You can say, I forgive that person. And you can forgive somebody at a distance. But to be reconciled to them means that you're coming together with them. And so God has not only forgiven us, but he has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. And thirdly, it carries with it that we've been set free from the bondages of sin. In other words, sin can no longer rule over us. At one point without Christ, we were a slave to sin. But now we have this word that we can say to it. We can say no to it. We can say no to it. 
And we're empowered by the Holy Spirit to say no. No is a wonderful word. It's a wonderful word. Now, it might cost you. I remember one time I said no to my wife, and that cost me something. All right? <laughs> told, told one of my daughters, told, told one of my daughter's husband, uh, say no to her. I did, Mr. Miley, but I'm on the couch. I said no, but you have the power to say no. <laughs> so, so, not, so we've been forgiven, we've been reconciled, and we've been set free from the bondages of sin. In other words, sin no longer rules over us. So we've been set free that we would serve God and serve one another. Once again, to serve God and to serve one another. Oh, but 1 Peter 4, verse 10, again out of the Amplified. It reads, just as each one of you has received a special gift, a spiritual talent, an ability graciously given by God. Employ it in what? Serving one another. I, I, let me read that again. It says, employ what? The gift that you have been given, the ability that you've been given, the talent that you have been given, employ it in serving one another as it is appropriate for good stewards, for God's multifaceted grace, faithfully using the diverse and varied gifts and abilities granted to Christians by God's unmerited favor. So the purpose of which we've given these gifts is to serve others. And that is what he's called us to do. And I think there are categories of gifts. Like, and I, I, I believe all good gifts come from God. Give you an example. LeBron James is a gifted athlete. There are not too many LeBron Jameses around. He's gifted. Oh my goodness. Amazing talent. Now, a lot of the NBA players are gifted. They, they, they wouldn't be there if they weren't gifted. But LeBron James, his gift is kind of like way up there. He, he's gifted. I think the other, uh, Steph Curry. Oh, that boy can shoot. He's, he is a gifted player. Not everybody can shoot like him. I mean, I, I've been watching NBA basketball for decades, and I've never seen a person pull up from half court and swish it on a regular basis. And, and, but there are a lot of gifted players, but Steph Curry is truly gifted. Now, they both play basketball, but they're gifted in different ways. And I think that we are in the body of Christ. We've been gifted in different ways, but we're to serve one another. So there are, I believe there are spiritual gifts in which God gives us, which are exclusively uh, given to believers. And we'll talk about that later. These are spiritual gifts. But then I believe that there are gifts in which you are born with. You have people who are gifted musicians, people who are gifted uh, physicians, people who are gifted athletes. James 1 and 17 says this. It says that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. So every gift comes from God. All right, then I believe these gifted athletes, their gifts come from God. Whether they acknowledge it or not, they are gifted by God. They wouldn't, they wouldn't be where they are if they weren't gifted by God. But it's a matter of acknowledging. Now, what we have to do is looking how to use these gifts to serve one another. And we'll, I'm going to look at Exodus chapter 28. And this is the building of the tabernacle. This is Exodus chapter 28, starting with verse 2. And, he, and they're telling uh, the people, okay, these, uh, what you're going to be doing is this. He says, make sacred garments for your brother Aaron, you know, who's going to be the priest, to give him dignity and honor. Tell all the skilled workers to whom I have given wisdom in such manners that they are to make garments for Aaron for his consecration so he may serve me as 
priests. Now, these skilled workers were already skilled prior to this calling. They were, they were skilled. But what he's doing is now he's calling these people who have gifts, who have skills, and now they're using their gifts and skills in service of the Lord. Again, they were already gifted. They were already skilled. But now their gifts and their skills are used in the service of the Lord. Exodus chapter 35, starting with verse 10. It says, all who are skilled among you are to come and make everything that the Lord has, that the Lord has commanded. The tabernacle with its tents and its coverings, clasps, frames, crossbars, posts, and bases. The ark with its poles and the atonement cover and the curtain that shields it. The table with its poles and all its articles and the bread of his presence. I just want to stop there. So the people are there. They're, they're, they're gifted. But now their gifting is used to the building of the tabernacle. And I believe all of us are gifted. But now I believe he's called us. What are we called to do? It's to serve one another. And in this case, they're called to serve in their tabernacle. But then it goes on even further. Exodus chapter 35, starting with verse 30. Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has chosen Baziel. Now, Baziel, oh, I love that. His name means, it, it, the, the Basel means to, uh, the shadow, to shade, to hover over, protection. And El is God. In other words, God overshadows him. God hovers over him. God protects him. This is... Oh, I thought was. Well, oh. So once again, Baziel, the shadow, the shade, to hover over, protected by God. So here's this artist, is what? He's covered by God. He's protected by God. And he says again, Baziel, son of Uri, the son of Ur of the tribe of Judah. And he was filled, he has, he has filled him with what? The spirit of God. God, with wisdom, and with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skill to make artistic designs in, uh, designs in works of gold, silver, and bronze, to cut, to set stones, to work in wood, and to engrave all kinds of artistic craft. So now he was gifted already, but now he's been filled with the Holy Spirit, and now he has what? A designated task to serve the Lord. And the Lord hovers over him. The Lord overshadows him. The Lord protects him to fulfill that purpose. So he, is it, I'm surround, he's surrounded by God. To be overshadowed is to be surrounded. So Basil, he's surrounded by the Spirit of the Lord to do what? That service unto the Lord. Now he has given both to him, or oh, as a, as a Holiab, and Holiab means to a dwelling place, a home, a covering that shines, that is clear. Once again, his name means a dwelling place, a home, but it also means a covering that shines, that is clear. The son of Ashamath, in the tribe of Jan, Dan, the ability to teach others. Is the teaching what service? To teach others. And he has filled them with skill to do all kinds of work as engravers, designers, embroiderers in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, and weavers, all of them skilled workers and designers. Now, I believe that a gift, when you have a gift, it just shines. And now when that gift has been anointed by God, it gives it purpose. He covers it, and he protects it, and he hovers over this. Now, you can have people that are gifted musicians, but not necessarily anointed. Uh, an example, uh, this, this singer called Adele. Oh, that girl can sing. She is a gifted singer. And I bet you if she were to sing a Christian song, she might even get the church running. That's what we used to do in our church. 
when, when, the, when the songs were good, we had like, we had three people. You know, you have the, the standards like this, oh, hallelujah. But, but then you have the jumpers. That, that's Pastor Bob. These are the jumpers. And then you have the runners. We don't have any runners yet. And then also you have the flyers. They go, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Those, those, those are the flyers, all right. But that's okay. That's okay. But the thing about it is this. You can have somebody who is gifted but not anointed. Why is that? Because to be anointed, you have to be set aside by the anointed one. That's the difference. So you can have people who, who can sing those songs and, they're gr and they sound beautiful and all of that. But in order to be anointed, you have to be anointed by the anointed one who is Jesus Christ. That's what makes you anoint, an anointed singer. Now, giftings and anointing, like I said, you can have people who are gifted but not set aside for God's purpose. But in this case, what you're saying, what we're saying is that you're not only gifted, but now you're anointed to anoint me, what does it say? To, to rub and smear with oil, to consecrate, dedicate, set apart for the sacred purpose of God. So again, a purpose would be anointed by oil to set them si aside for the service of God. And what God does is he takes your passion, that which you love, and he just gives it a new purpose. See, I'm really passionate about comic books. I'm just passionate about it. And I was passionate about comic books before I got saved. But now the Lord has taken that passion and w put it in a di gave it a different purpose. He has set it aside. And you just realize that this is by what God has done. So that's what I'm talking about. Somebody can be a gifted person, but not necessarily anointed. You can only be anointed when you're anointed by the Holy One. But now that you're anointed, but now that, now that you are anointed, now you are called. Now you are called. Romans chapter 12, starting with verse 3 out of the Amplified. For by the grace of God given to me, I say to every one of you not to think more highly of himself or of his importance and ability than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment. As God has apportioned to each a degree of faith, a purpose designed for what? Service. Who has given you the gift? God. And he's given it you for the purpose of service. Just as in one physical, one physical body, we have many parts. And these parts do not all have the same function or special use. So we, who are many, are nevertheless just one body in Christ. And individually, we are parts one of another, mutually dependent on each other. And since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each, each of us is to use them what? Accordingly. What Use the gifts accordingly. If someone has the gift of prophecy, let him speak a new message from God to his people in proportion to the faith possessed. If service I underline that one for you. In the what? The act of service. Or act of serving. If service, in the act of serving. Or he who teaches, in what? The act of teaching. Or he who encourages, in the act of encouragement. And he who gives with generosity, and he who leads with diligence, and he who shows mercy with, in caring for others with cheerfulness. These are gifts. Now some people might have these gifts already, they may possess these gifts. You have people who are very hospitable. But now God has set them aside, now they're anointed, and now they have purpose. And we have to reckon, and when, you, when somebody is gifted, you recognize it. You know it. As a teacher of middle school, I was an art teacher. And 
there were some students that were just gifted. Oh my goodness. I would be there and their skill was just evident. Their skill just shined. Their skill just spoke. And they were better than me. I, I had middle school students who were in eighth grade who were doing college level work. They were gifted. Not all of my students could do that. Some of my students could have couldn't draw a line. Even if you threatened not to give them nutrition, they couldn't draw a straight line with a ruler. But then there were those, all I could do is just sit back and marvel at their gifts. Their gifts were clear. Their gifts shined. And everybody knew it. So you know that somebody is gifted by it, it just shines. You just know it. It just shines forth. Uh, I'm going to be kind of biased here. By, oh, goodness, we have a gifted praise and worship team. Why? Because it just shined forth. It was just, oh, goodness. I'm a, if, if I was a runner, I might have run. <laughs> but it, it, it just shines forth. And, and again, as my career as a teacher, I, I came across some incredibly gifted teachers. They were not Christians, but they were incredibly gifted. And I would, without a, without a doubt, have them teach my children. They were gifted. They were that gifted. They were just stood, you know, heads and shoulders above everybody else. And that's what we're talking about, gifted. And when you're gifted, it, you know it. Everybody knows it. You, you can just see it. But then you can have Christian teachers. They may, be, they may have been set aside, but they have no gift. We had this one teacher at this one school. <laughs> they were so bad that we had to homeschool one of our children just so that they wouldn't have this teacher. That's how bad they were. They might have been anointed, but they sure weren't gifted. And, but, and as teachers, you know it. You, you can see it. It is evident. So on one hand, you can have somebody who's gifted but not anointed, but on the other hand, you can have somebody who's anointed, maybe anointed, but they may not be anointed for the thing that they think they're anointed for. For in this case, it was a person who was teaching. It, it, it was, it's not their gift. But what God does, he takes that which you are passionate about, that which you love, and, and, and people begin to know it, and people see it, and it becomes clear to others, and he takes that which you are passionate about, and he gives it a new direction. If we look at the Apostle Paul and what he says of himself in Philippians chapter 3, starting with verse 5, this is what he says of himself circumcised when I was eight, year, eight days old, of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, an exemplary Hebrew, Hebrew, as to the observation of the law, a Pharisee, as to my zeal for Jewish tradition, a persecutor of the church, and as to righteousness, supposed right living, which my fellow Jews believe in the law, I proved myself blameless. He was what? Passionate. He was zealous. I would even say he was gifted. But whatever former things were gained to me, as I, as I thought then, these things, once regarded as advancement in merit, I have come to consider as loss, absolutely worthless for the sake of Christ and the purpose which he has given my life. So I believe this, that Paul had zeal. He said he had zeal. But now his zeal has what? A different purpose. Yes, he persecuted the church, but now guess who, he's, guess who he persecuted after that? He persecuted the devil. In other words, he put the devil on the run. Yeah, and, and, and he had this love for the law. He had this zeal for the law, but now he had this zeal to know Christ to know the word of God. He just took what he was passionate about, took what he was gifted about, he took his academic acumen, and he gave it a new purpose. He took that zeal and that passion, and he gave it a new purpose. And this is what God has called us to do. He said, all right, then, that passion that you have, I'm not asking you to give, that, give up that passion, but what I'm having you to do is I want you to take that passion and to take that zeal and direct it toward honoring God. Direct it towards serving God and direct it towards serving others. It, it says in uh, Proverbs 18, 
16. This is how your gift shines. This is how it is clear. It says, a person's gift makes room for him and brings him before great people. They shine. Their gift shines, and their gift is clear, and the Holy Spirit, God, protects that gift, and they, they, the Spirit of the Lord is on them, and they've been anointed. One more time. I am anointed. I am called. I am gifted for his purpose. Ah, uh, but then, have you ever seen people who are anointed by God and gifted by God and called by God, but they're not following the call? You, you see it. They have these gifts and these abilities and all of these things in which God has given them, but they haven't followed the call. They haven't answered the call. So you have all, you've been anointed by God. I've seen it. People who were just amazingly gifted by God, amazingly used by God, and God has, God has set them aside, but now they're not answering the call of God. And all those gifts, all, the, all the, that, 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 that ability is not being used. What we saw in Romans, is says, if one in service in the act of serving, if you're teaching in the act of teaching, if you're encouraging in the act of of encouragement. So it is important that we as people respond to the call. And if you don't respond to the call, I think that you can't fulfill the purpose of God. You could be anointed, you can be gifted, and he could call you. He says, I have this for you, but it's incumbent upon us to respond to the call. Now, this is just me. I think Jesus, when he talks about this parable, that not responding to the call could have dire consequences. Oh, I know, I know, Pastor, why can't you preach something else? I just want to keep it real, all right, then. And Jesus is talking about, this is the parable, he's talking about the kingdom of heaven. And he says this, for it, the kingdom of heaven, is just like it is Matthew chapter 25, starting with verse 14. For it, the kingdom of heaven, is just like a man who was about to take a journey, and he called his servants together and entrusted them with his possession. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability. And then he went on his journey. The one who received five talents went at once and traded, with, and traded with them, and he made a profit and gained five more. Likewise, the one who had two, two made a profit and gained two more. But the one who had received the one went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, a talent... It, it's not, we're not talking about ability, but what we're talking in that particular context is dealing with it. It was a, a, a measurement used into weighing gold or silver. So one, like it was, they're saying that like one talent of, of silver was like 15 years of, with 15 years wage, and gold was worth even more. So what he's saying to you is I'm, he's given them something of value from the master. And what did the master want? them to do. He wanted them to use it. He wanted them to be productive to that which he had given them. He wanted them to what? To be productive. Now, jump down to verse 24 in Matthew 25. Now, the, the one who had received one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew you would be a harsh and demanding man, reaping the harvest where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid to lose the talent. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is your own. And look at what the master says. But his master answered him. Now again, this is likened unto what? The kingdom of heaven. You wicked, lazy servant. He wasn't only wicked, he was lazy because he buried that which the master had given him. 
In other words, he was called, he was anointed, he was gifted, but he buried it. And the master said, you wicked, lazy servant. You knew that I reaped the harvest where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter seed. Then you ought to have put my money with the bankers. And at my return, I would have received my money back with interest. He wants some production. So take the talent away from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. And to everyone who has and values his blessings and gifts from God and has used them wisely, will be given, will, will, more will be given. And he will be richly supplied so that he will even have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, who does not have because he has ignored or disregarded his blessings and gifts from God. Even what he had do, even what he does will be taken away from him and thrown and thrown out the, and, and throw he says and throw out the worthless servant into the outer darkness in the place of grief and torment where there will be weeping over sorrow and pain and the grinding of teeth over distress and anger. But wait a minute, Pastor. How could he take that which is given to him? I, mean, you, you, I, th I, I thought, uh, what about Romans 11.29? What about that, Pastor? Um, well, Romans 11.29 says, For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For he does not withdraw what has been given, nor does he change his mind about those to whom he gives his grace or to whom he sends his call. Those are unchangeable. But it says here, they, he gave that which belonged to them, and he gave it to somebody else. All right, I think we can get a clearer picture uh, if we go back to Matthew chapter 25, starting with verse 19. He says, after a long time, the, the, Lord of, the Lord of the servants came, and what did he do? Settle accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered me to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. I believe that you're, you have your gifts, you, you, you're anointed, you're gifted, and you are called until you take that final breath. You always have the call. You always have the gift. <clears throat> and you're always anointed until you take your final breath. I think about how, you know, you have musicians who are gifted singers, and they... And they, they grew up in the church. They grew up in the church. They, 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 they made their, they, these musicians, they just sang to the Lord, but then they go out and they, and they go into the world and they, they make their money. And then they come back to the church and then they, they begin to sing the gospel songs. The anointing hasn't left them. The gift hasn't left them. They, 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 and that's why you, they, people, where you, these, these gifted people who grew up in church, they come back to the church and they sing these songs and you just, woo! I'd run myself. That's because their gifts and their calling and their anointing is irrevocable. But the question is, are they answering the call? Are they answering the call? And that's, that's what it boils down to. And these gifts, and, and it, this is, when this is being settled, he's saying, I've come back, and he says, as a result, enter into my rest. This, I believe, is judgment. All right, then judgment comes, and now I'm going to settle my accounts with that which I have given you. So I believe that's what he's talking about in this particular passage. He doesn't take back the gift. He says, I, I'm settling this now. The what? I have come back from my journey, and I'm settling my accounts. What have you done with that which I have given you? What have you have done with the anointing? What have you done with the gifting? What have you done with the calling? And because this person 
hid that which the master gave them so nobody could see it. The master called him what? Wicked and lazy. So at the judgment, he's going to settle his account and as to who answered the call. And it's he who determines whether he go into door number one, enter into his joy, or door number two, outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. He's the one that determines that. I, I, I can't make that call. That is in the hands of the master, whether you answer the call. But it begins by you answering the call of salvation. Because the Lord is calling you to be saved. Those of you who are watching me on Facebook and on YouTube, the, the Lord is calling you. Those of you who may be out there and you might have been backslidden, you might have been in the church, the church might have hurt you, or you might be disgruntled with it, or you might have some bitterness toward it. Guess what? The Lord is still calling you. And he wants you to answer the call. So those of you who might have been backslidden, those of you who have fallen away, who once knew the Lord, the Lord is calling you. He wants you to answer the call. He wants to use you. He has anointed you. He has gifted you. But those of you who do not know the Lord, the Lord is calling you. He's calling you to be forgiven of your sin, to be reconciled to the Father, that you might have victory over sin. He's calling you to salvation. This is what the Lord is doing. And he wants you to answer the call. If you're watching me on Facebook or on YouTube, this is the call to be saved. This is the call that you would receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus says this, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. This is the Master's calling. And those of you who are, who are just wayward, and your faith has been beaten, the master's still calling you. Never forget that you're still anointed. Never forget that you're still called. Never forget that you're still gifted. And his door is always open to you. So I want, for those of you who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me. If you're on Facebook or on YouTube, pray this prayer with me. I recognize my need of the Savior. I believe that Jesus Christ died for the forgiveness of my sins. I confess my sins. I ask the Lord to forgive me of my sins. I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in my heart God raised Jesus from the dead. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I ask to be filled with your precious Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, for those of you who have made that confession of faith, that's the best decision you've ever made. But I also want to pray for those who, who you who are backslidden. You once were a church, but you're no longer a church. I want to pray for you because God's door is still open to you. Heavenly Father, oh, Father, you love us, even when we don't feel it, even when we, are, are, when we feel alone and abandoned, we are surrounded by you. Father, open our eyes to your love, open our eyes to your mercy, open our eyes to your grace, open our eyes to your compassion, open our, our eyes to the call that you have for us. That, Father, you have gifted some of us and, you, and, and that you've set that a gift aside, but we haven't used our gift in a while. But, Father, your call is still there. Your voice is still reaching out to us to call us back into your purpose that we might fulfill your purpose for your glory. Father, reach out to them because you love them with an uh, with a, uh, with a all-powerful, all-knowing, everlasting love. 
Father, bring them back to yourself because that is your will. This is the confidence that we have that if we pray anything according to your will, that you hear us. And if we know that you hear us, we know that we have the petition in which we bring before you. And you have said in your word, Father, that you that have begun a good work in us, it is you that will complete it because we are your workmanship, your handiwork created in Christ Jesus for good works that you've not only given us the desire to do your will, but you've given us the ability to do your will. So it is your will that we fulfill that plan and purpose which you have called us to do. And that, Father, that your spirit would reach out even now, no matter where they might be at, no, whether they be at home, in the hospital, wherever they be, that your spirit would reach out to them and draw them to yourself. Draw them back into that relationship with you. Draw them back to that calling. Draw them back to that gifting, to use that gift for your honor. We thank you and praise you, Father, that you're doing this for your glory. And in this, we just give you thanks in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Now, if you don't have a church home, I'd like to invite you to La Mirada Four Square Church. I love this church. I love the people in this church. It is a good church. It is a church where you can you know, get your roots and grow deep and grow in the things of the Lord. And I would encourage you, if you know, if you can't able to make it to La Mirada Four Square Church, Find a church home. Find a church where they're preaching the word of God and that you might be a part of, that you might fellowship one another, that you might serve there and use the gift that God has given you for his glory. Now, next week, we're going to examine more anointing, but I want, we're going to explore these gifts. You know, there's gifts that you know you, you have naturally, but then there are gifts in which the spirit of the Lord gives you that he wants to use for his glory. And I always read out of uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 13, starting with verse 20. It says, Now the God of peace, who brought up the dead, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant, even Jesus our Lord, equip you in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Well, now we have announcements. Amanda. Amen. Oh, hey. Amen. 16th, right? 16th. There will be prayer Monday and Wednesday mornings starting at 6 a.m. until, uh, you don't have to stay that long, but you're more than welcome to join us. Um, there will be Bible study this Wednesday starting at 7 p.m. with Pastor Bob. Amen. And then we'll be having our Spanish service tonight at 5 p.m. here with Pastor Sam and myself. Um, and we will be this February 5th, uh, Saturday, we'll be fasting from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. Uh, that's with Pastor Sam and myself again. And then we'll be having our annual church business meeting this next Sunday, January 23rd, right after church service. And we'll also be discussing our calendar for the year. So you're more than welcome to come to that planning. Um, there will be, I'm so excited for this. <laughs> I can finally announce it. There will be a joint church picnic with the Church of the Nazarene Saturday, April 9th at the La Mirada Regional Park. And we'll be having a pop blessing. We'll be praying for the event starting Saturday, February 12th and the 26th right here at the La Mirada City Hall uh, where the torch is at 9.30 a.m. Again, that's February 12th and the 26th, which is a Saturday if you have any more questions, just uh, see me or Pastor Miley for more uh, information. And with that, it is offering time. Yay! Just going to just pray and you know, just pray over the offering and just thank the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the offering that you have given us. Everything that we have. 
is by your hand and your hand alone. You have been so gracious and kind to us. And we thank you for the privilege and opportunity just to be able to give back unto you that which you've given unto us. Father, may the money we use be for your glory. May we use it wisely. May we use it, Father, that uh, we would be good stewards of that which you have given us. And in this, we just give you thanks and praise and honor, glory and power. And we thank you for this day in which you have given them, given us. For this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your many blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And you are dismissed.